So one month later. So um, welcome to your hacks. We have a bunch of questions, and for unknown reasons, I forgot some questions last time. So we try to fix this, and there were two interesting questions. And um, yeah, now start with questions. So the first question is, um, I or question is a statement. So I got, I got an email from Gulam, and he, um, and, and and this was a reaction to the to the recent Airhack News uh, round mail I wrote, and um, Gulam said, um, stop talk about Javi, and um, this was actually a nice email, and he he um, he, he wanted to show me that um, or show to explain you that Spring is actually better. And uh, this is actually the contents of the email. And um, what is the sex spike? Sex spike is a very small project I wrote to validate some ideas from Java E8 uh, security spec. And the idea was to to uh, to to write a to do app and see how it actually feels like. So and and um, and he said uh, he knows I'm struggling with Java E, which is actually not true. I really like Java E and whatever I do right now is java e based and 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 he wanted to compare java e with uh, with spring and say okay um 2008 uh, spring uh, is nice but actually spring is older than that than that so i would say the the, the popularity in spring increased in 2005 not 2008 um 2008 we already had i think uh, almost java 6 we had java e5 so what i what i actually did with Java E5, I used um, uh, Java E a lot. So for me, it was, um, you know, the um, great revolution. And before that, I just used J2E because um, it was requested, but it was not that hard because we didn't try to exaggerate and we used um, Xdoclet. And it says, okay, um, Spring is easier than EJB CDI. I, w- I would say it's almost identical, but um, yeah. And it's not easier, it could be more powerful, but not easier. And uh, then, but the conclusion is in 2015, uh, Spring Sp- Spring is the uh, most widely used framework for mission critical applications, which is not my perception. So Spring uh, is still popular, but uh, Java E gets more and more popular. And so probably following my blog, you will see there are lots of startups deciding to use Java E because it's very powerful, not powerful, very usable and convenient to use. And um, and um, he asked me why I'm using Java because it's standard. Um, this is one of the reasons, not because of standard, I don't have, um, you know, because most of the companies already have Java E servers running. So then I just use the servers. I don't have to discuss, you know, which framework to use. And um, so, and it says, okay, IBM, Retina, Apache, or use Spring, but also Java E. So, um, and say, please stop t- um, about Java E. I cannot stop uh, to talk about Java E because if I would stop, <laughs> I, I couldn't talk about my project at all because uh, 92, I would say, Right now, 100% of my projects are Java E related. So um, if I stop to talk about my projects or Java E, I will stop to talk at all. <laughs> so um, so this is actually interesting email. And um, at least please uh, find out gaps about Java E. This is what I really try to do. So I ask on all conferences, uh, workshops, projects, you know, where is Java E lacking? And, and, and I think uh, what what, from my perspective, monitoring and security could be improved. And this is... Uh, what I try to participate and uh, security is already there but for me it is uh, hard to use in Java 7 right now which should be improved in Java 8 so um, but this email was actually nice but uh, it was an uh, I- interesting angle so for me it's like you know Java is the most popular framework and from angle from 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 the email writers Java is like you know uh, or Spring is the most popular framework so it's really you know um, through the eyes of beholder it really depends who, who you ask okay this was the um, first to getting warm. Some I got some questions on Twitter already, and um, the next question is, uh, or two questions. I forgot for unknown reasons to uh, to talk about the questions last last time. So I would try to to fix this right now. So and um, and the question is, um, there is an MVC framework with Java E. What do you see in the future of JSF? Do you think JSF will become obsoleted by this MVC framework? I would say what could happen that JS, JSF becomes uh, an implementation of this framework and not obsolete. I mean, there are always room for component-based frameworks if you like the components. <laughs> so if you cannot live with the components, forget about this. So um, I would say um, this is, I will come a little bit to the question number three. But um, 
I don't know f why I forgot it. So to, to, to show you what MVC actually is, I, I, I wrote a very simple uh, project to uh, show you how it will um, feel like. And it is actually executable. And not only this, I created a GitHub project. So um, you can immediately uh, try that. It is um, GitHub in my account. And this is the project called uh, Java e MVC sample. So this is the project, so you can check it out. And what I did, I just cloned that and uh, I will show you um, what it actually, what it is and what it does. So uh, I try to be a little bit more realistic. So usually I created a uh, boundary atom clock, very simple, which creates just the current date. So the current time is on stateless EJB. And there's in the business, in the, um, in the business uh, layer and in the presentation layer, uh, I started with JAXRS configuration, so this um, MVC framework um, will run on top of um, of JAXRS. So um, I started with JAXRS, and instead of using resources, I used views because it's just right now it's all about presentation. What I also created is a very simple um, model object. Uh, model is like DTO more or less. And this model, as you can see, it is not managed. So there is no, um, I could put model or request scope or whatever, but I wanted to show you the other way to do this. So it's just a holder of the of the now string. And the whole piece, the, the whole MVC part is this um, class, which comes, a time controller, which comes with path time. And um, this is um, the, um, uh, the JAXRS path and the controller comes actually from the framework Java Java X MVC controller. And um, I injected two, um, two pieces, models, which is quite interesting, looks like a hash map, so I can put whatever I like to the model. So in this time, I, I, I just stored here an unrelated class, no, unmanaged class called time. And I fetched the current time from the EJB and stored in the class. And then I'm pointing to time GSP which is just ordinary Java server page. <coughs> and here I'm just extracting the, uh, 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 the, the, the payload and the time comes from here. And the now is the accessor, accessor method, get now. <coughs> this is the time. So this is where it comes from. And if I will run it, so you need a um, specific Glassfish build and uh, a runtime dependency, as you can see, um, it works pretty well. So I really like the framework a lot, but I don't think it will replace all JSF projects, JSF projects. It could be probably very nice to pre-populate skeleton for a, for an Angular app. This could be perfect, but I don't think it will eliminate or, you know, JSF applications or whatever. So, um, it's just a uh, complete different uh, requirements here. And what's also interesting or interesting necessary because we don't have Java E8 yet, I had to include this Oz Ozark project. And what Ozark is, is the reference implementation of the MVC framework. And with the Ozark comes the uh, API and the API is Java X MVC API 1.0, which is very, very thin. And by the way, what's also nice, the whole spec comes with about 30 pages so you can read it you know in half an hour so really nice pack and i'm look, really looking forward to um to java 8 and uh yeah to for the projects because there's always some need you know to to, to create some um uh, templates which are uh more or less static or um or uh, pre-generate uh for instance uh, a javascript application and um, I think it's not necessary to construct everything in the browser because it will slow down, you know, the construction process. So I think we covered this first question. So you, you get, you have now a, um, you know, um, basic understanding what MVC actually is. If, of course, you can swap, you know, the, the template framework. You are not limited to JSPs, but I consider JS is actually, JSP is actually nice. And um, yeah, this is, um, what I wanted to show you was the MVC. So let's look whether we have any questions from, from Twitter or chat. So there is uh, some old friends in the chat, but they are usually very quiet. They're just uh, watching what I'm doing. And I have um, oh one question from Twitter from Bruno Horta. And he asked, um, session scope create more than instances. Why? I implemented serializable. I don't believe that you got two instances of session scopes. What I think you are 
you are measuring the instances in the default constructor. So what I think is what you did, you have uh, something like atomic integer and you're increasing this in a default constructor. And what you should do, I would say, try the same in post construct and just count the number of instances. If uh, session scope is normal scope, so you should get exactly one instance per session. What could also be for unknown reasons to get multiple sessions. This could be cause a reason of the problem. But I guess it's a constructor, so just uh, um, leave me a note here in the next hour whether you counted the instance in the constructor or in post-construct. If in the constructor, I explain you why this is a problem and it should never do any initialization in constructor and CDI and EJBs. Okay, perfect. First question covered. Oh, already two questions covered. And the next one. Do you use GSF for the presentation layer for, for your projects or you use something else? So uh, the recent projects were all JavaScript and 50% uh, of this was Angular and with uh, CSS and HTML5. And this is because it was suited better for the task. And um, in the um, in other projects, um, I, and we use GSF. So now, now it's just you know an coincident or, or an accident that I'm just using uh, just JavaScript on the on the client side. Uh, GSF is still used a lot, and um, in my perception, is it it is uh, used right now more successfully than ever before, because people understand or developers understand GSF better than before. And before it was like you no know, magic bullet for everything, silver bullet for everything. And right now, GSF is used as uh, I would say uh, technology to solve a problem. And uh, surprisingly, just watch the um, interviews on my blog. So uh, what what really struck me. Um, more than, I would say, more than half of all startups are using GSF because they are very productive with it. And to summarize uh, my point of view of GSF, GSF is perfect for form-based applications. It's not very suitable for single-page applications usually. And um, what uh, GSF uh, ex uh, excellently solves is uh, data binding with the server. So it comes for free. And um, GSF is perfect if you like the components which comes with prime faces. If you have to extend these components, forget about forget about GSF. And the another possibility to use GSF is um, just to rely on um, on on the standard uh, out of the box components or no skinning nothing, and just go with uh, HTML5 markup without any components. So it would also work well. So um, and of course GSF. Uh, uh, needs some memory and CPU power on the server because the server-side component model, but the same is true for all other models, uh, so Wicket uh, or, or whatever you are doing on the server, if, even MVC will consume some some CPU on the server. So um, I'm, I would say I'm pretty neutral, neutral about GSF and my personal point of view for, you know, admin UI or whatever you have to quickly build, GSF is just very productive. Okay, now this is the, sorry for that, two questions from the last time. So I will just look briefly on uh, the Twitter. So no question, no question, no question in the chat, which is uh, surprising, but it's very good. So it could be a fast one, fast air hacks. So, um, so I wrote a book, is the green one here. And um, and, uh, and uh, someone, um, someone, the Suchwerk told me, um, I'm reading a discussion about cap in real world patterns. When you say don't distribute advice can be understood as general best practice. Yes, this is what I really mean. <clears throat> Does that include cases where a single JVM app is replicated on the nodes in a cluster? Um, yes, I would uh, I would question the clustering, for instance. Is qu clustering really needed? So um, what happens if there is no clustering? So of course, if the, you know, if the app will crash, it is gone. And uh, the question is, you know, how quickly you can start it again. So it really depends on the infrastructure. So if you had, for instance, a Docker and some kind of process which monitors the app, it would be very easy to restart the application in a second. So in other words, is the best practice not to run the cluster at all? Yes, if you don't have 24-7 um, requirements and um, um, because, you know, you cannot replicate the HTTP session reliably usually, what it means because of CAP, either you can... Um, you will have to lock the cluster and wait until everything um, everything uh, replicates over all nodes, um, or you can replicate asynchronously. But if you replicate asynchronously, it cannot be consistent. So, um, of course, you, you could use something like an in-memory grid and just replicate the two nodes, and not to all. But I have to say, most of the clusters are either two node or four nodes. It is very unusual to have a Java cluster with five hundred nodes or something like this. So, um. <laughs> 
So um, what I mean is, at least pick um, so put presentation and the business logic in one JVM. There is no no need to 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 distribute this if the presentation is a server side component, um, server side framework like MVC, JSF, and stuff like this. And um, yeah, this is um, this is um, uh, the first one. And cluster um, is only needed if you if you um, if you would like to have you know twenty four seven and if um, uh, support if one one node uh, uh, dies that the other one will pick up the uh, the traffic. And what I usually also do is try to rely on um, or try to um, uh, introduce something like sticky sessions uh, because otherwise uh, you get a problem with the sessions. Um, yeah, this is this is one. Oh, sorry, this Nick from uh, is not from Zuckwerk, it's from Mike W. Yeah. So my advice is don't distribute. Don't distribute um, unless you really have to. And you really have to is usually a requirement. Like you know, you have some external service you have to talk uh, to, or you have two different teams with different life cycles. So, um, but usually pick every, every everything in one war. Put the war on one server. The server on one JVM and the JVM on one OS. Period. Okay. Perfect. So uh, the next question is. Oh, let's briefly look at Twitter. Oh, interesting. So um, there is uh, there is a default constructor and access the bin by named and produces method. What it uh, could be, um, it could be that um, there is no session. So it creates no. Um, for instance, could be that uh, you are injecting the session scope into a I don't know stateless session bin or request scope session bin. But um, st no, in both cases, it even should work. The question is whether you are, uh, how you are exiting it from the outside. Is it JAXORES or is it JSF? And you really have the session established. So um, what you could do, you could, for instance, um, how it's, co it's called session binding listener, HTTP session binding listener, and, and, and see whether you actually have HTTP sessions. And named is a little bit strange. Why you need named? Oh, um, because... Um, named is, is is a stereotype so something is strange with the named unless you would uh, you are accessing the session scope directly from jsf this would be the only explanations why i need uh, named but then the question is why you need producers then so uh, something looks strange ah jsf <laughs> you see how interactive this is perfect um yeah but then usually you you wouldn't need producers and um yeah, and, 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 and see how many sessions do you have. So this could be also interesting. Otherwise, it could be, it, it, it is a bug. So obviously, session scope is a normal scope. You only have to have one instance per session, never more. Um, very good. Thank you. And um, so obviously, it's not so difficult to send out emails from Java e via Java Mail. Exactly, this is what I'm also doing. And, um, and now he asked me, um, best practice to receive handle corresponding emails um and this is a little bit harder so uh, i think what what Zuchfe would like to have is something like a thread in a mail app where there is a uh, request and a response and they stick together so you have a thread of of messages how to implement this and this is harder so there is a um java doc um mail api and uh, you will have to to search for this and i think this is this is this the right one and if you look at this, there is a search capabilities. So you could use su subject to, um, to, uh, to, to, um, you know, to uh, glue the request and response together. And um, what if you have IMAP, I think there is an IMAP ID which identifies the uh, corresponding emails. But then you will have to use the comsun part, which is obviously proprietary. And there is somewhere something like an IMAP ID, I think. So if you use this, you could um, you could write you know a service which searches for for the uh, first email and, and and searches then for all for the whole thread, and uh, you could implement something like this. How reliable it is, I have no idea. But you could use um, search capabilities. Um, like um, uh, with with the with the search support, so Java X Mail search, um, or use the IMAP capabilities. I never did this. I just sent emails. Um, I think I don't even received emails. And uh, um, from Java, I just send the emails. But what's interesting, there was back then James Apache. This is I used on my server in 1999. <laughs> 
So this was an an mail server called James, an old one, and um, and uh, look at this. Um, so I, I I was able to receive the emails with James, and probably James has something like this because there was support for mailets, and with the mailets you were able to do more. Um, I wrote some you know um, I, uh, spam filters back then, but. Um, you could actually uh, search whether there are some capabilities, you know, to find corresponding emails. Okay, so um, next question. So how would you inject properties using CDI that can change at runtime? So I did this several times, um, even in an, wrote an article about this. It, uh, the article should be... Uh, configuration Adam been in Java magazine with the E at the end magazine this is like this and look at this article it's a free one it's a very old one but I think the contents should be still up to date so it was it was based on Java 6 so it takes too long oh this is three years old already, so it. Huge one. This is a free, a free subscription. You only have you know to subscribe to the magazine. You could receive all the articles. So it just takes too long. Um, look at the article, and uh, the um, answer right now is, um, what you what you don't see here, you don't see how it is injected. And I eject this usually using something like, um, let's say, instance of something. At inject string configuration, configuration get. So if you call here get, you will get the recent, recent instance of the string. This is, it worked for me, and um, yeah, it worked always for me, actually. So, um, yeah, this was the solution. And if not, it works for you. The question is, which servers, server are you using? And uh, if it doesn't work, then, um, and this request scope is a little bit strange. I never used request scope for this. Um, I just um, said produces, qualifier could be. And then on the other 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 side, I just uh, injected a string or into whatever in a wrapped it with an instance. So this was my solution to the problem. Someone asked, "Is Java e more secure and faster than Microsoft ASP.NET MVC?" Completely wrong question. You cannot answer the question why. Java e uh, could be as fast or or faster or slower than MVC because Java is just a spec. It could be implemented extremely fast or uh, in an extremely fast way or extremely slow and you know bad way so um the question would be more like is uh, tommy or is payara or is glassfish or is the web celebrity profile faster or better than asp.net mvc and um it's hard to say but what, what i can say is that uh, microsoft recently in the recent e years improved a lot so they they invest a lot to open source is a really interesting company and um, there is no reason why you shouldn't use asp.net if you like .NET. So um, I spent, you know, uh, all my developer life in, in Java or Java E. This is why I do Java E. But right now, .NET could be as interesting as, as Java E actually is. But I would say both are very similar. So if you just take, you know, the reasonable application servers and compare them to SP.NET, very, uh, very similar. Uh, the question is, how, <laughs> my feeling is that um, servers like, for instance, Whitefly, uh, with uh, the popular JSF stack, like for instance, um, Prime Faces are probably more popular than ASP.NET, and then probably have less bugs than this. But this is just rough estimation. That is actually, uh, I have no idea. And the next question is: Java is more secure and faster than Spring Framework? So secure Spring had you know uh, security flaws, and Java e different servers have also security problems. It's not like every something is perfect. Faster is also you know how to say because um, the Spring framework has to be run on something. Um, I would say just if you would run 
let's say you have a modern application server like Payara, Tommy, or Whitefly. Let's say Whitefly. Whitefly 8. And you're building a Java e app on Whitefly 8. 8. Or you would you would uh, have a Whitefly 8 with Spring on top, then I think Spring would be a little bit slower than Java E because, of course, Spring is a f another framework on top of Java E framework, so you get two frameworks running on one server. Um, but um, I'm not sure whether it's actually measurable. So Java 8 is, you know, uh, so great with the performance that usually all unnecessary, unnecessary calls or interactions are re really hard to measure. So um, more interesting would be, you know, uh, Spring on Jetty comparing on, on Whitefly. And I would say they, they would be very similar. I, I think there's no reason why Spring or Java E should be faster or slower, or whatever. What I'm more interested in in is the, the, the programming model or um, uh, or usability productivity and this where there are different opinions out there but from the runtime perspective i think spring and java e have very similar footprint and and and, and um, uh, are, are very similar when spring runs on jetty or tomcat and you're comparing you know this was whitefly what i don't get still some projects have whitefly and pits put spring on top this is what i don't get at all but um, this is a completely different conversation. Okay. Um, question number eight. Is it is it a good idea to move the business logic from Java code um, to start procedures on the B level? And uh, the answer is, of course, it really depends. So if you um, if your team um, comprises highly skilled uh, SQL uh, experts, SQL expert. I would um, not hesitate and just put whatever is possible on the d database level. Then, of course, the database cannot be easily swapped with, with other database, but because the thought procedures tend to be a little bit database dependent. But um, on the other on the other hand, you paid for the features actually of the database. And he, he, on another observations, databases tend to outlive the applications. So. Um, so um, usually a database lives longer than your app. It could change, of course, right now because we have, uh, you know, um, the NoSQL movement and whatever. But uh, for ages, it was true that the database lives actually longer than the, um, than, the, than the application. So I would say if your team comprises SQL experts and not Java experts, putting everything on a database is perfect. Uh, what you shouldn't do you shouldn't split the business logic. So parts of the business logic is on the, on the on the service layer in Java and the other part in the database without any hard rule. So there should be a rule or something um, you can describe or define um, to decide where to put the business logic. And if you know this rule, nothing, I would say, store whatever um, is um, necessary to a database. And what we also did sometimes there, um, you, you have to know to handle a large amount of data, then it's even better than the data should live in the database. So you write some code in a database and process the data directly without, you know, uh, pulling the database, uh, the, the data from the database, um, transforming the data in Java and storing it back in the database. So I am beginner, uh, Java e beginner asked me, uh, uh, we need BinXML, where the BinXML should be and uh, when at inject is executed. So very, very, very good question actually. And because we have the MVC project, we can look briefly at this. So just go to the file perspective. So if you're a beginner, download NetBeans and start with NetBeans um, because you have no time for installing plugins, obviously, and stuff like this. So um, it's a running joke. So um, as you see, the Beans XML should be in source, main, uh, web app, web inf. And what I always do, I say uh, bin discovery mode all, and the default would be annotated. So what it means, all annotated classes are injectable. And this is the location. The next question is when add inject is executed. And um, what we can say in general, it is executed before usage. So if someone in, uh, invokes the method now, right now, and the object is not initialized. So what we can rely on that in the method post construct, whatever is needed is injected. So um, it could be laser, it can be eager. This depends on the uh, on the um, settings from the application server. But what we can say in post construct, all at inject is already performed. 
in div in constructor is not the case, but in post construct it should be. And um, so this is um, how it's called Hollywood principle. Uh, don't call how how was it? Uh, uh, don't call us. Ask, don't call us. We will call you. So what it means. Um, if it's time to execute the business logic, the application server will initialize all the dependencies. And um, some of the dependencies, if you have, for instance, EJBs and min pool size of one, are already uh, pre-initialized at the startup time of the application server, which is quite nice because you see the errors at deployment time. Very nice. I will just look briefly on the questions. So I have two more queens. So I think he created one bin for each JSF page. Very strange. Indeed. So, okay. Breakpoint post construct. And when I call produced method the second time, the list is null. So, really strange problems you have, Bruno. I can help you. Uh, what I can say, it looks like a bug. Some configuration bug, it should work. And um, I think we create one bin for each JSF page. So, what it actually means is something wrong with the session. So, uh, for unknown reasons, the session is not propagated. So, between the pages. Okay, very good. No other questions. So it looks like all of you are happy. No question in the chat. Really, no questions. Nice crowd. Or, you know, Java is so simple and so obvious that there are no questions left. So, question number 10. Porcupine exposes JMX. Is Porcupine exposed by JMX? So what Porcupine is, is another project I... Um, I used in some commercial projects and um, and 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 where is it here? And what it is, it just uh, um, um, makes on on the fly creation of thread pools and configuration extremely easy, and it creates managed thread um, threads. So it exposes, of course, the managed threads are exposed usually via, via JMX, but Porcupine does not expose anything. To Glassfish, white for whatever. Just there are no dependencies to Glassfish or 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 or, um, or uh, fly or any application server implementation, and all the monitoring statistics are exposed via um, JaxOS. <coughs> Could be, and there is a Porcupine spy, and what happens um, behind the scenes? Porcupine is able to inject you into the header all the statistics to all that you get, you know, uh, in debugging phase, um, all the runtime statistics in each response on the client in a header. This is what uh, Porcupine is doing, but there is no dependency to JMX or AMX from, from Glassfish. And um, what, what Porcupine actually behind the scenes is, um, uh, is there are some executors from, from, from Java 6 and um, it configures um, uh, thread pools behind the scenes. So this is what happens. Um, yeah. So very good question. So um, what happened to AMX support for Glassfish? I've been trying to get it working Glassfish 4.0. So I'm, um, what I remember in 3.0 and 4.0, there was a, a button in JMX like boot AMX. If you push the button, it just booted. Um, and it, for my opinion, just worked. So um, I had no time to to, 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 to to look at this, but it always worked for me. And I don't think there are there, there are many um, many uh, changes to uh, to Glassfish 4.0. What you should try is just try Payara. This is really a very eager community. It's incredible, actually. Payara, Payara. So this is the company and there is a github payara at github payara this is so what it basically is is um, a glassfish clone but they are the, the community is incredibly eager so if you look at this all the commits are performed by the payara guys and um and if you if you if you find a problem, just just file a bug, and usually you get at least a, a response. And what they provide, they provide co commercial support for for Glassfish, with even I don't know uh, one hour and twenty four hours reaction time. So um, if you have any problems, you know, write to to this account. And um, yeah, it's a very last question. Um, J J2E Web App uses Web Services layer with EJB three and JPA two O. And um, and everyone extends extends the base EJB, which is 
unusual. I, I usually don't do this, so I never extend from a. I can't remember whether I introduced once a a uh, an abstract EGB. I can remember this, and um, I and uh, the question is, I think. So um, how to dispatch different persistence unit to different EGBs? And um, I think we covered it the last time in the AHEX um, TV. So um, what you can do, you can produce entity managers. So um, you can just expose them as whatever you like and then inject them. So you would have, you know, one uh, produces method like um, oh, we have here pseudocode. So let's do this. So we could do something like public entity manager expose and uh, depending on injection point and with injection point you have all the metadata you need you know the bin class the, the, the enclosing class and whatever you need then you can produce the entity manager and uh, now um, within the method you could decide depending on what i don't know bin name uh, current principal name you could inject the principal and decide, you know, depending on the user from which country the user is or whatever, principal, you could decide which entity manager to return. So this is what I would do. And you can also configure par partially the entity managers, but in Java E context, there is nothing left for, to configure. Uh, you only need a data source. So if all entity managers need a common data source, you can configure everything on the fly. Okay. So I will just look briefly. So uh, there is nothing to propagate. I would say there is more. Um, the Bruno Horta uh, say, do, do I need to propagate the session for each page navigation? Actually not. Um, this is what this, the browser should do. Should uh, uh, send you a cookie J session ID. It should just work. Uh, why it does not work? I really don't know. This is hard to say. There are also no questions left in the um, in the chat. So um, the last thing, what happened is uh, interesting. So we had the next time, the next week, we have the um, unusual workshop. So there's just uh, Ehex and Munich Airport is just um, building Java apps from scratch, persistent distributed programming in microservices. So this is, um, there are lots of attendees already here, I don't know, uh, almost 20. And uh, we had to close their, or commit to our room this week. And now this too, we have like, I don't know, I think five developers. So we have about three to five seats left here. So um, very, very small group. So if you like to get uh, intense training with me, um, see you next week. And this one, what will happen, we'll build together from scratch a Java e API uh, application. But uh, I would rather let you build the app and I will just try to, to help you and fix your error. So I would try to to limit my um, my my. Uh, developing um, amount uh, to a minimum. And this one is about NoSQL and um, persistence um, and uh, distribution and all the and the principles behind. And of course, microservices uh, is about how to make uh, one single applications, how to split it apart into multiple ones. And also in microservices, I will explain in depth, of course, Porcupine and all this related stuff. So the last look at the... Uh, Twitters, no question, no question, no question in the chat. So thank you for watching and um, see you in June, the first Monday of the month. And uh, thank you for the questions, interactions, and yeah, see you at um, in projects, conferences. So um, and um, and of course, yeah, Hex Immunity Airport. So the next one would be in July and then December, and then yeah will spend some time in projects. Okay, bye.